Welcome to Electro Online. We're going to continue to show you some more examples of how to find the lowest common denominator, but in this case we want to show you that it works just as well for adding fractions as it does for subtracting fractions. And so here we mixed it up a little bit. It shouldn't really make any difference. The technique is exactly the same. Again, we must find the lowest common denominator. The denominator, the smallest denominator, which is common to all the three denominators. Again, we'll show you both methods. The first method is to find multiples of the largest denominator and then see if the smallest denominators fit evenly into that. 20 doesn't work because 10 does fit into 20 evenly, but 8 doesn't. So let's try 2 times 20, which is equal to 40. Does 8 fit into 40 evenly? And the answer is yes. Does 10 fit into 40 evenly? And the answer is yes. So here you can see that this method is by far the quickest and easiest of the two methods because we immediately, on the first try, already found the lowest common denominator, which is going to be 40. But just so you can see that the other method works as well, in case you were to try that, you're going to write each of the three denominators as a product of its factors. So you can see that 8 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2, which means the factor 2 appears three times. The number 10 can be written as 2 times 5, so the factor 2 appears once and the factor 5 appears once, and 20 is equal to 2 times 2 times 5, so you can see that 2 appears twice and 5 appears once, which means that the lowest common denominator is going to be a product of all the factors that occur the most times for any one number, so in this case the factor 2 appears three times, and the factor 5 appears once here and here, but we only need to account for it one time. And so here we then get the LCD will be equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, which is 40. And of course we ended up with the same number, but this method was a much, much faster method. Again, since we now know what the lowest common denominator is, we take a look here and we say, well, 8 fit into 40 five times, so we have to multiply the denominator by 5 to make that into 40, which means we must multiply the numerator by 5 as well. Here, 10, we have to multiply times 4 to make it into a 40. That means we have to multiply the numerator as well by 4. And finally, 20 fits into the denominator twice, so we have to multiply the denominator by 2, and we therefore multiply the numerator by 2. And by the way, this should not be a minus, this should be um, a plus, this should be a minus because I had a minus there. So, good thing that I caught my error. So, 3 times 5, that gives us a new numerator of 15. 1 times 4 gives us 4, and 7 times 2 gives us 14. So, now we can write all of these um, numerators over one common denominator, so we end up with 15 minus 4 plus 14 all divided by the common denominator of 40, which is equal to 11 plus 14, which is 25 over 40. Now, 25 divided by 40, it looks like we can actually reduce that one, because notice the numerator ends in a 5, the denominator ends in a 0. That means they're both divisible by 5, which means we can divide the numerator by 5, and we can divide the denominator by 5. And if we do that, our fraction now becomes 25 divided by 5 is 5, and 40 divided by 5 is 8. And so this is our final answer of that fraction. Again, notice we had two methods to find the lowest common denominator. In this case, method 1 looked like it was definitely the fastest way to do it. And that's how it's done.